Hello, everybody. Welcome to your online lecture. I will be conducting lectures in short, um, maybe like 18 to 20 minute videos um, covering the various topics on our schedule. Uh, we have already covered the first bit of chapter 19, the nomenclature of aldehydes and ketones, as well as um, reactions with aldehydes and ketones using oxygen nucleophiles. This lecture is going to cover nitrogen nucleophiles. I will recreate our experience in the classroom by having the whiteboard over here on the right, the slides over here on the left, complete with stuttering and flubs. And the only thing you're really missing at this point is watching me flail. And if you truly miss that, I encourage you come to office hours and see me. All right, let's jump into it. First, we are going to be reminded that for every example, I'm going to use acetone. This is because it is the absolute laziest one I can draw, but every reaction that we're doing in here could work with an aldehyde or a ketone. We are going to be making some new functional groups when we react with different types of amines. So the reagents that we're going to be interested in here at first are going to be primary amines. So one R group, a nitrogen with two hydrogens, and an acid catalyst. This would also work with ammonia, um, NH3. The only difference would be that instead of a CH3 here, you would have a hydrogen. The product that you will get is called an imine. It's a double bond between a carbon and a nitrogen, and whatever was attached there, will, whatever our group is still gonna be attached. All right, this is your imine. We're gonna learn lots of new functional group names in this chapter. Let's go ahead and talk through the mechanism. Of course, it's all stepped out for you over here, but you guys uh, have, have been with me long enough to know that I need to talk while I write. That's the, okay, we're good. So we're gonna start off, much like we did with the oxygen nucleophile, um, but the first two steps are opposite from what you saw with the oxygen nucleophile. Water and alcohols, when you're forming hydrates and acetals, it's not a strong nucleophile, so you had to make the, ox the electrophile here better. We don't have to do that with an amine. An amine is a stronger reagent on its own, so we can start with that nucleophilic attack. We're still going to get a tetrahedral intermediate because we can't put five bonds on carbon, but we are going to go ahead and open that up. We'll have a minus there. We have added our amine, so it's still overall neutral. This negatively charged oxygen is not going to exist for long because if you recall, um, we have an acid present. So you're going to see um, in Klein's notes, he uses HA, that works. It's just whatever generic acid we're using. You could use A+, plus, but HA will be helpful for later. There we go. And we are going to keep moving along. And we have our protonated alcohol there. And we still have this plus charge R+. plus. Now, we just created some A-. minus. The A minus is going to give us our neutral intermediate, right? That A minus is going to pick, to, it's just going to pluck that hydrogen off of your nitrogen, and it's going to give us our new, first neutral intermediate here. When you have an OH, an alcohol, on the same carbon as an amine, this is called a carbonolamine. Right? It's kind of like our hemiacetal intermediate. Now, we know that our product we are shooting for doesn't have an oxygen in it. So we are going to need that OH to leave. OH is not a good leaving group, especially in an acidic environment. So that acid is going to come into play again. 
oh, H, oh, let's, H A, you are going to protonate your alcohol. It's very similar to what we did with our acetal formation. Now, water is a much better leaving group, and we're not going to show it just leave on its own. What we're going to show is that we are going to form a double bond. This is where our imine, born, imine bond forms, and we're going to kick our water out. Let's go back this way. Let's draw. Oh, we'll leave that in the frame. Here we go. And we are almost there. This nitrogen still has a proton on it. And so the four bonds are going to make that nitrogen positively charged. But this acid is a catalyst, right? We used the acid in step two. We got it back in step three. We used it in step four. And in our final step, we are going to reclaim that acid. So the conjugate base of our acid is going to reclaim its proton. And that is going to leave us with our neutral amine product. Ta-da! You will be responsible for this reaction, for the mechanism and predicting the products. It's going to be super important that you guys start to recognize the functional groups of the starting material and the reagent. And if you can predict what kind of product you're going to make, that can help in keeping track of this uh, mechanism. Also knowing that neutral intermediate can give you sort of like a halfway goal. <clears throat> now, the acid, uh, and this is just explaining why that first step um, shows the nucleophile attacking first and then uh, the protonation. Honestly, these two steps, they happen really fast. So you can read up on it, but I'm just going to continue forward. Okay. The pH is going to be really important when you're dealing with amines. Um, it will not necessarily affect what you're seeing on the paper, though. Now, I want to reiterate that this would happen very similarly it would be the exact same mechanism if we used ammonia and acid. The only difference would be is that the nitrogen would be attached to a hydrogen at the end instead of an R group. So for ammonia and primary amines, amines you will get amines. When we use a secondary amine, however... So now we're looking at a nitrogen with two R groups and one hydrogen, still going to have an acid catalyst. We're going to make a different functional group. There's still going to be the two R groups attached, but now the double bond is going to be between two carbons. This is called an ene amine. Let's look at the mechanism and see if we can understand why we would predict an enamine instead of an imine. Of course, you have the full mechanism on your slide, but I'll, I will draw as I talk, as it is my way. This is going to look very similar, uh, if not identical, all the way up until the last step. So the first step, right, we have our amine, and it is going to attack our carbonyl, of making our tetrahedral intermediate. We have our O minus. We have our nitrogen that has four bonds, so it's a plus charge. And then you've got your acid that will quickly protonate that oxygen. Right, that will lead us to our OH and our positively charged quaternary amine here. We used our acid, and we get our acid right back, right? We're going to deprotonate that amine. That, of course, will leave us with our neutral intermediate, our carbonolamine, right? It has an OH on the same carbon as an amine, right? So that's that neutral carbonolamine. Again, we are 
aiming to get rid of that oxygen, but we know OH is not a good leaving group. So we take HA and we protonate, right? We make it water. We make it into a good leaving group. OH, H plus. Now, again, do not show the leaving group just leaving on its own. You are going to form the nitrogen-carbon double bond, and you are going to kick that water out. This final step is where we're going to see a difference. So we do still wind up with this quaternary, um, not quaternary, where we wind up with this positively charged ammonia, or amine with four different bonds. There's no hydrogen here, right? The proton in the last reaction was taken from the nitrogen and forms the amine. But we have two R groups. So the next acidic hydrogen where we can reclaim our acid is going to be from one of these beta positions, right? A carbon adjacent to that amine bond. So if there is no hydrogen on nitrogen to take, that conjugate base will take this proton, form your carbon-carbon double bond. We can't have five bonds on carbon. And so nitrogen gets its lone pair back. And so it's only in that final step do we actually see something different in the mechanism between imine formation and enamine formation. All right, and you just have a little uh, summary slide here showing it's the same all the way until you get to that last step where you need to deprotonate. If there is a hydrogen on the nitrogen, that's going to be the one you take. If there is not, you're going to go for a hydrogen on an adjacent carbon, leading to the ene amine. The last thing I want to leave you with on this topic is, let's see, it's called the Wolf Kishner Wolf Kishner reduction. It's another way that we can fully reduce a carbonyl down into an alkane, similar to the Clemenson reduction. But this is a two-step process that uses um, something similar to what we're doing. Instead of doing an, a, a regular amine or ammonia, we're going to use hydrazine, NH2, NH2. And then in a second step, we're going to treat with base and some water, KOH typically, and that is going to completely remove that double bond. Now, I want you to know what each step does, right? If we take our ketone or aldehyde and we just treat it with hydrazine, NH2, NH2, and acid, and of course that acid catalyst is important, you are going to make that imine, right? It's just instead of an R group out here, it's an NH2. This is called... Um, a hydro well, never mind. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing there. But I do want you to be able to predict this intermediate product. Then if we continue on and in the second step use a base and water, that is where we're going to fully reduce it down to the, that alkane piece. You do not need to know the mechanism of, of this second step, but you do need to be able to predict products of either step one or step one followed by step two. This will be important in synthesis problems later. It's always nice to have another reduction at hand. In the next, um, again, please, you do not need to know this mechanism of uh, the second step of wolf Kishner. If you just enjoy mechanisms, by all means, get into it. Um, you have some notes on nitrogen nucleophiles. Uh, you are going to be under acidic conditions in all of these that we've talked about today or in this slideshow. So everything should have a neutral or a positive charge um, for most of the things. You will notice that you do make an O minus in that very first step. That's okay because that proton transfers very, very fast. All right, I'll see you on the next